Hello, Geeks, Freaks, and all those unique. I'm MC Frodus. Yesterday, I posted a video about continuity errors, and I've already gotten some really nice responses um, to said video, so I thought I would read them for today's episode. And one of them actually might take a little bit to um, get into, so even though there's only like two of them, I thought that you know, there would be enough to discuss. So the first one is from Lexi. It says, one of the best ways I've seen how to treat continuity errors is in the Emperor's New Groove, where it's like, by all account, it makes no sense. Shrug, well, back to business. The only continuity that needs fixing is the one that affects the plot since everything is just seasoning. The danger I feel is in always wanting to be a purist, particularly in media that is by no means pure to begin with. I mean, that's a very good point. Um, I mean, for me, um, continuity, it's, it's just about the creativity of coming up with a um, explanation for how the continuity works. And like I said, like, I care about continuity. If, if I'm not happy with the story, then yes, I'm going to focus on the continuity errors. Uh, because frankly, I would rather focus on the minutia of it than the larger systemic problem. Um, there are movies, which maybe I shouldn't mention because I don't want to get a reputation for just, you know, you know, dunking on that movie, but... I, I mean, I mentioned it in the last video, so whatever. But I mean, like, the reason why I focus on stuff like Poe Dameron's changed backstory is because there is so much more in that movie that I don't really want to think about. So it's just a lot easier for me to think about these, you know, small things that really don't matter all that much. Which I will give this to people who dislike things like Discovery. If you dislike Discovery, it's probably much easier for you to focus on things like this doesn't fit with the established canon rather than other aspects, which might be a little harder for you to explain um, why you don't like it. Uh, I have another comment uh, from Matthew L. George uh, on the same Continuity Errors video. Cybok was never mentioned either, lol. So I have no problem with them introducing Spock's never before heard of human sister. Um, funnily enough, I actually nearly mentioned Cybok in that bit where I said that Spock never talked about his family members, but I kind of promised several videos ago that I would never bring up that particular Star Trek movie ever again because I hate it. I think continuity changes don't matter as they are usually improving on existing things and would prefer it for shows to make in in jokes about the changes um i.e klingon foreheads and ds9 and tos uniforms in the mirror universe um of enterprise great video and it's really got me thinking about attitudes towards continuity video uh continuity errors well i'm glad it got you thinking about that kind of stuff for these long-running sh um sh franchises there's going to be continuity errors and there's going to be continuity changes. Uh, you mentioned like the, um, the Klingon foreheads. I kind of wish they had actually gone with uh, their initial plan, which was um, when Worf went back in time, he was originally going to look like one of the TOS Klingons and just nobody was going to comment on it. It was like he had always looked like that. Because the whole conceit was that the Klingons during the TOS era were supposed to be, like, all ridged and everything. It's just they didn't have the special effects budget to be able to do that. Um, and I've seen a lot of people who have commented on how the Klingons look different in the Kelvinverse and the Klingons look different in Discovery and all of these different... Uh, I have actually come up with a... Um, you know, continuity fix for why the Klingons always look different. I think that the Klingons have unstable DNA. Uh, I don't exactly know what that means, but I mean, it sounds like something they would have in Star Trek. Um, I'm a writer, not a scientist. So um, 
But yes, so the Klingons have unstable DNA and it means that they are constantly, their appearance is constantly in flux. Now this was made even worse by the augment virus. So you can have different groups of Klingons that look vastly different from one another. Um, and they're all still Klingons. And honestly, I don't even know if you need to go this deep into it because... I mean, you can have Klingons that look different from one another. I mean, first of all, you do have the augment virus that was introduced. And certainly you have uh, humans on Earth that look different than other humans on Earth. Just because there is an entire species, that doesn't mean that they're a monolith. It's kind of like the same problem with the Planet of the Hats, where, you know... This one species is all into acquisition and this species is all into honor. That's kind of not how species actually work. And even when it comes to appearances, species don't all have to look the same. There can be differences in their appearance and it can be very subtle or it can be very dramatic. So yes, I think that there is room for all of the different types of uh, Klingon species. We've actually now got a canon explanation as to why there's two different kinds of Romulans. Why you got ones with kind of bumpy foreheads and why you got ones that just look like Vulcans, basically. And that's because they're from different regions of the planet Romulus. Um, so uh, Matthew made another comment on um, uh, Star Trek V because obviously I um, said that, you know, it was very intentional that I didn't bring it up. And also, like, I mean, I didn't bring it up, and certainly the shows make a very concerted effort to never mention uh, Star Trek V. And so Matthew suggested, the less said about that movie, the better. It was probably a marshmallow-induced hallucination. Anyways, so um, that got me thinking. So... As I have said, I super dislike um, Star Trek V. And I am certainly not the only one. There are a lot of people who dislike Star Trek V. And it seems like it is a rule amongst the shows to just not bring up Star Trek V. I mean, it's possible that Lower Decks might eventually do it because that seems like something that Lower Decks would completely do. But at the moment, nobody's really referenced it, like, outright. So we need an explanation as to why this huge god thing um, that wanted a spaceship and just nobody ever mentioned it ever again. And I think I've come up with an explanation for that. So it's not a marshmallow-induced hallucination, though I do like that one. Uh, but at the beginning of that movie, Kirk is climbing a mountain, uh, El Capitan, and he ends up falling and he is saved by Spock. And I would like to propose that Spock was never there in the first place. Uh, first of all, those little, like, boots that you know the flying boots i mean have we ever seen anything like that again in star trek anti-grav boots on a planet really really um so that seems a little not too sure about um and also i spock going camping I don't know. But, I mean, don't take my word for it, because I'm the person who keeps on saying that Spock would go dancing with Uhura. So, uh, what do I... I think that Kirk uh, went mountain climbing and got injured um, and possibly suffered, you know, some sort of, you know, you know, maybe went into a coma briefly. And so uh, the events of Star Trek V were actually you know, Kirk's coma dream. And if you think about it, actually, the idea of um, Star Trek V being Kirk's nightmare makes a lot of sense. Um, first of all, 
because the movie was shot by William Shatner, everything is from Kirk's perspective anyways. And certainly Shatner had a certain, um, uh, let us say focus. He was very focused on his own character and, um, some more things fall into place. Um, the, uh, enterprise, uh, was not really a, um, it, it was constantly falling apart. It wasn't a, you know, solid ship, despite it being, you know, not having been in service for all that long. And that is Kirk's subconscious not having the same emotional attachment to that ship as the original Enterprise, you know. And you also have him at odds with the rest of the crew. And that's because, you know, Kirk is feeling somewhat divorced from the rest of the crew. He's, he's always had a bit of separation being the captain. But they are reaching this point where they're getting towards the end of their careers. And Kirk is kind of feeling a bit of drift. And he's not sure if people would have his back. Now, this is isn't really reflecting the way Kirk truly feels about his uh, friends and colleagues, because certainly a lot of people have those um, dark voices in the back of their heads that people would betray them given the chance. So um, uh, Kirk is, you know, trying to deal psychologically with these problems while in this coma dream. There are a lot of the other, like, weird stuff in it, like, um, the fan dance, like, that's just something that Kirk believes that Uhura would do to distract guards because he wants to see it, honestly. And that's the whole reason why it was in there in the first place, because William Shatner thought it was sexy. So in a Captain Kirk fever dream, he thinks it's sexy. So let's throw that in there. Um... Spock, you know, nerve pinching the horse. That's that's Kirk kind of thinking, you know, Spock is some sort of Superman, which I would, you know, you know, the slashers take that any way you want. But also, like, considering you have a best friend who does have all of these, you know, special powers and did come back from the dead, like you might start believing that they're able to, you know, knock a horse out with just a, a simple touch. Um, so, yeah, um, Star Trek V, Kirk's fever dream. That's why, you know, nothing really ever comes of anything that's in it. I hope this wasn't too much of me dunking on it. Um, because honestly, whether it exists or not, it's like, whatever. Frankly, we've had hundreds of years of continuity after it. So I know how little um, Star Trek V affects anything. So I don't mind if it is canon. Th that's how you explain away the continuity errors of nobody ever mentions the events of Star Trek V. And that's because it just never happened. Um, it, it's, and it doesn't hurt anybody if it, if it didn't happen. And... I think the important thing is that if somebody disagrees with you, then you'll just be like, okay, do you want, you can have your feelings as to what actually happened and I can have mine. Honestly, I think William Shatner, the thing that he really wanted to do was to climb that goddamn mountain. So as long as that canonically happened, then what does it matter what else happened in um, Star Trek V? You know, it's, Kirk climbs a mountain. That's it. Uh, Star Trek V can be the one where the, he climbed a mountain. Just like Star Trek IV is the one with the whales. Uh, so, I'm rambling now. And I have to go do schoolwork. So, I'm going to end this now. So, until next time, live long and may the Force be with you.